We are at a very historic property here in Wyoming Valley that maybe many of us don't know about. This is the Nathan Denison House here in 44. An honest to goodness Revolutionary War era home still standing that people can actually go into and learn about the history of the valley. What really strikes people is the simplicity of the house. Uh, so many people want to know where the curtains are on the window and the rugs on the floor. If you were to come and visit Nathan Dennison in 1790, this house is exactly what it would have looked like if you came to visit him as you walk up the pathway to visit and pay your respects to him. This is exactly what you would have seen back then. This was strictly an agrarian community. Either you were a farmer, just about everyone was a farmer, or you were a tradesman. I work as a joiner who travels, in this case with the military, to do woodwork. So if anything is needed to be repaired from the army or if they have a special order, if something they want built for the military, I'm going to build it. Different people with different crafts, to, again, to support the army. Uh, that's what they did. They followed the armor wherever they went. You're following the drum, literally. That's what they called it, following the drum. Are you ill, sir? Who are you? I am the regimental surgeon. The surgeon would operate wherever. Uh, he op often operated on the back of a door. They would literally remove the doors, and that was the surgical thing. Before I married my husband, the surgeon, I had worked as a weaver. Most women who were part of the camp followers, of course, they had to be married. But if you uh, were widowed in the process, you would have to marry very quickly to stay within the encampment. And most of them were given three weeks to find other arrangements before they were left. They couldn't continue following. Because one did not want a single woman amongst the soldiers, it was preferable for women to be wed. I'm working with what they call a box loom or a tape box loom. With the army, you probably wouldn't do anything more than that because you had to carry everything. And I do mean everything. So you had your bedroll, you had your blanket, you had your haversack, which would hold whatever eating utensils you had. Today I'm dressed as a chaplain with the 24th Connecticut Militia. In your century, it's going to be the 109th Field Artillery. Nathan Dennison started off as second in command of the 24th Connecticut during the Battle of Wyoming. It was one of the biggest battles of the Revolutionary War in Pennsylvania. July 3rd is usually you're just ramping up for your barbecues, your picnics. Well, here in this area, you know, 250 some years ago, it was a very rough 4th of July. Wyoming Valley, 1770s, this was the breadbasket for the Continental Army. Now, the British knew how important this was. That's why they wanted it. They marched out of the fort and the British led them into a trap. About 2,800 men perished in 40 minutes. And so on the 4th of July, 1778, Denison signed a capitulation, a surrender of all of the forts in the Wyoming Valley. This was an area where a Revolutionary War battle was fought. This gentleman, Nathan Denison, was part of that battle. It was an ill-fated battle, but it was a battle nonetheless. Nathan Dennison was first and foremost a pioneer. He served in the Pennsylvania legislature and he ended his career as one of the first judges here in Luzerne County when it was formed. My great-great-great-uncle signed the Declaration of Independence. This is something that's in my personal family history, going back in my family history for several generations. History isn't taught that much in schools anymore because you have so much to cover with the time frame. They can't get into detail. That's left up to the individual to pursue if they're interested in it. Which is why I'm here because I love, I love the history. I love educating people. Not only are you giving information to the public, you get to live it and experience it. It's the founding of a nation right here in Wyoming Valley. It helped, it, it played a role in the founding of America.
Like what you see? Help VIA tell more of your stories with a donation today. Become a member at wvia.org support.